So guys, you're here because you have a problem. You're doing a bit of work in your bathroom or your kitchen and you've got tile adhesive on the walls like so. Possibly you're going to need some plastering done, but you're looking at this tile adhesive and you're thinking how can you plaster over that. So my tips here are going to show you how you can spend a little bit of time and save a little bit of money as well and will help you in future jobs as well get this these walls looking from this to this sorry i've got too far ahead that that's it all plaster that's that's a different video but to this and this is the walls all stripped they're actually nice and smooth now and um, minimal tile adhesive left on them and hopefully this trick will work for you and it'll make your life that much easier and you can hit the thanks button the likes button down in the comments if it does i'm gonna show you here straight away whether or not this tip will work for you as some tile adhesive is different and this won't work on certain stuff but hopefully on the most it will work um, and again at the end of it as well i'll give you the story of how i actually came about all this and how my hard work turned into a wee bit of something good so here's the test this is what you're sort of looking for it should come up like this where it's actually easy enough just to take a bit off with your thumbnail and once you do this method and that's what you get you're in for so i said a good time you're probably still gonna sweat and have a have a bit of a sore arm but it is a lot easier taking it off if the water penetrates it guys you can use a wee bit of soap and warm water will be better but cold water works i'm just using cold water here no soap nothing added as we're going to plaster the walls so don't want anything you don't have to constantly have to keep washing the walls after but i recommend guys if there's any electric you make sure it's all switched off and again depending on what's on your floor you you might want to be a bit less messy than i'm being here but i've just got a concrete floor below me which is going to be redone so a bit of water on it won't hurt it and again the wee test that showed you there with the thumbnail if you wet an area and leave it a minute it should start to soften and this is me like i've literally just wet this now so i know i'm in for a bit of an easier day and there you are it's all coming up like mush it's turning back to as it was when it was in the bucket or mixed in the bag um, and this is definitely going to make your life much easier guys so hopefully you have went ahead and you've wetted your area and tested it and you've covered everything up and you're all safe with electric and stuff and um, the beauty about this wetting it as well is it, it kills all the dust so there won't be any dust and it definitely definitely will reduce strain and pain in your arms and the reason why this is a good thing to do if whether you're a plasterer or not you're probably going to need a plasterer regardless after this so you will be paying for a plaster and again this is where the the, the saving the money is going to be guys even though i'm doing this i'm saving myself having to undercoat this and wait for the undercoat to then pick up before i can put the skim coat on so if you do this before the plaster even comes to look he already sees a blank canvas that he doesn't need to do as much preparation so you're literally killing a lot of preparation time for him and you're gonna save yourself money on that aspect alone and also on the material sides of things if you're a plaster it's gonna save you having to buy another coat plaster such as bonding or hard wall and again you shouldn't really try not to use bonding in a bathroom although this is just a, a small toilet area shouldn't be as much moisture but again the less product you have to put on a wall the better and um, you're just saving money on materials alone and if you just watch the video guys like that that's coming off so much easier now and i to be honest i haven't really let it soak in too much i've wet it all maybe went around the room twice and then wet it again maybe before I've, I've hit it another good method would be a steamer if you use a steamer on it but the problem with the steamer is you can potentially blow the skim coat off the the plasterboard on my right that would be an example of what could happen that big bead there sh shining through that could 
happen if you hold that steamer on too long. I've seen it many a times before people taking wallpaper off and obviously this is wallpaper, it's a bit stronger. Now the scraper I'm using is it's pretty new, it's not that it's not an old one. Old ones are better because they're actually sharper. And the story on how I actually came across this method was I was doing a small job back when I was sort of just coming out of a time. I was doing a job for a mate. He couldn't do it, so he put me onto it, and I landed. And they had no PVA on the job. They just had skim. They had no bonding, and I was like, "How can I skim over all this?" And I was like, hey, "Look." I asked if I could buy bond and he was like no I basically I was stuck to the sort of price my mate had give so my only option then was I need to scrape it all off I can't just skim over it there wasn't even enough skim to triple coat it so I had to scrape it off so got the scraper out started scraping and as you have probably known because you probably maybe did a wee bit yourselves the stuff was rock hard and my arms pretty strong young guy but my arms were feeling it, my shoulders were feeling it. I was kind of doing this job after working on site as well so it, it was already in a turn turn day but I had no mask on me because I wasn't expecting to have to do any of this scraping business and as you can see there's there's no no major dust coming off here it's just all all coming off um, in, in nice big pieces and it's not creating any fine dust that I need to worry about breathing in. But back to the story, um, it was a common thing we did on site if we were brushing the floors all rubble that sparks left, we would we would damp down the floor and it would stop the dust rising into the, the basically up into the air, into the atmosphere. And so I I was getting sick of the dust. I had these two wee bathrooms to to do the scrape and I was you know, like I said, I was I was young, strong, fit. Uh, but it was just the, the dust was starting to really affect my nose and uh, wasn't very nice at all and I decided I'm going to damp, damp down the walls a bit and that may kill the dust now this was uh, everything was done upside down the, 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 all the walls were tiled halfway up but the top half had the old tile adhesive there was a brand new suite then there was brand new lino on the floor and stuff so I was trying to be as clean as I could which was also very very dif difficult making the job even harder again but as a plaster you have to cover up regardless so as I went down the walls to kill the dust I wet, wet them all down and cleaned up the floors was going and stuff I then noticed wow this this has got much softer and by this stage as well guys you can imagine I was using a brand new hand scraper just like the one I'm using now it was actually razor sharp because I'd broken it in on the first three four walls that had done and I had another couple of wee walls to do I basically learned it at the very very end of the job but it was still it got me it got me a wee bit more and more motivated back onto the actual plastering of the job more or less felt like I'd done a day's work just scraping it off um, as a, I was just using all muscle and then now I'm handing news you don't need to use the muscle you can use the brain look at this it's all soft it's going to come off and like I said a wee bit of warm water maybe a wee bit of free up liquid in a wee bit of washing liquid might soak in and penetrate that stuff quicker better and for a bit longer but again you might need to, to wash the wall down with sugar soap and stuff and, and dry it down before you go ahead and get any deep plastering done so I really do hope this has helped you um, and it gets you spurred on on your, your little project again I have seen people scrape it off and able to just touch up the walls and paint again this these walls aren't going to be obviously they're not going to be paintable after this because there's bits of paint flaking and stuff as well but you, you can see I hope this has saved you so much time and heartache guys I wish I had a new it earlier than I did but I'm handing this information over to yourselves and wish you the best of luck with your project Next, scribe back plastering.